Welcome to It's All A Little Weird, the podcast. I'm your host, Adam, and if you're someone who finds themselves drawn to the unexplained, the mysterious, and maybe just the downright bizarre, then you've landed in the right place. Join me on this journey as we dive headfirst into the realms of paranormal phenomena, UFO encounters, cryptozoology curiosities, and a whole smorgasbord of strange mysteries that'll leave you scratching your head and questioning reality. This isn't your typical podcast where we're all buttoned up and serious. Oh no, here it's all a little bit kickback. We share stories and we're delving into the weirdness with a sense of curiosity and almost a little bit of humour. So grab your favourite drink, get yourself comfy, turn off the lights and let's embark on this wild ride together. After all, this world, it's all a little weird. Today we are going to cover possibly one of the most haunted hotels in 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 the world in the world and this this hotel has a lot of credence obviously you've already seen it by the thumbnail or even by the title we're going to be covering the shanley hotel now before we get into this i do want to say i apologize for any mispronunciation that that i make i i have to make that apology because obviously if I don't, people pull me up on the, uh, on the on the comments. But we are going to cover the Shanley Hotel. Now, I'd like to take this one a little bit more seriously because there's there's quite a lot. There is there's absolutely quite a lot to cover in this episode. So we may end up going a little long. But strap in, get yourself comfortable, get yourself a drink, turn off the lights. Let's talk about the Shanley Hotel. So one of the things that really drew me about the Shanley Hotel is the amount of almost evidence, which we will be talking about as we go further down the podcast line, but there is a lot of evidence. So before I get started fully into this podcast, I do want to say that I'm, per, personal opinion, I'm one, I think I've said this in, in previous podcasts, I'm not necessarily a disbeliever, but I'm not a believer, I'm, I'm not 100% either way, I'm probably 50-50. Now... I would honestly consider myself a man of science, although I'm not a scientist, I consider myself a man of science. If, there was, if there's enough proof for something, then there's got to be something there, if you almost grasp that idea, ideology of it. Now, with that, the Shanley Hotel comes with a hell of a lot of credence, it also comes with a hell of a lot of marketing, but we're going we're gonna to sort of push by that. Now, a lot of the things that we're going to discuss over today's podcast are either from personal experiences of people that I've found and also through the website of the Shanley Hotel itself. So there's a lot of unexplained things that happen in the Shanley Hotel and we're hopefully going to be discussing a few of those today. Now if you haven't already heard about the Shanley Hotel, it is one of the most haunted, if not the most haunted hotel over in the USA. It's based over in New York in Ulster County. And the phenomena around the hotel are as such. There's rocking chairs that sway of their own accord. There's unexplained clock chimes, fluctuating temperatures, mysterious whistling going through the corridors, phantom footsteps, haunting piano melodies. So there's musical phenomena that's played throughout. Disembod disembodied voices and laughter of unseen children, which genuinely creep the absolute hell out of me. Anything that to do with children, uh, whether it be horror movies or or, 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 or even ghost stories, anything that includes a child um, scares the absolute living daylights out of me. As a father myself, um, even my own kids laughing from upstairs really, really sort of bugs me. Um, but some even speak of tantalizing sense of cooking wafting through the air, which is not necessarily a horror thing, but I would, I would quite enjoy that. Um, despite the absence of any culinary activity and also um, visual phenomena, so shadows lurking in corners, apparitions materializing and an unsettling sensation of being observed pervades the atmosphere. Now, obviously, one of the things while I was doing the research into this video that really sort of piqued my interest in the Shanley is the requirements for going to stay there. Now, if you want to go and stay at the Shanley Hotel in New York, one, you have to sign a waiver. Now, if someone is going down the routes of um, legality, then my mind honestly roams to two different places. One, that there's some evidence that something is actually happening here, and two, that the owners of the hotel are going to get you in the night. Um, but in order to stay at the Shanley Hotel, 
you have to be above the age of 16 um, and also acknowledge what you're actually putting yourself in for, which is what's all wrote in the waiver itself. Now, one of the things I will be doing for the guys watching over on YouTube, I will be putting spatterings of the video evidence because there is quite a lot of video evidence when it comes along to the Shanley. So I will be smattering um, small small amounts of um, the video evidence. I may um, put the video version up on uh, Spotify and, and Amazon Music, but for the for the people over on YouTube, you will be seeing smatterings of that. And also some of the other evidence that I've gathered is the um, the reviews from from real people who have actually stayed here. I will be smattering that throughout, but. The haunted history of this place just basically starts from day one. It looks like <laughs> almost a cross between a farmhouse. If, if I'm to try and explain it to the people who are listening, if you haven't ever seen the Shanley Hotel, it looks like a cross between a farmhouse and the Amityville Horror House. I, d I don't know whether that was the architecture that was running through sort of the Americas back in the day, but this, this building is foreboding. Now, when we look at it in different lights, even in daylight, it looks it looks foreboding. In night, it genuinely looks like your mind could run away and play tricks on you. I feel if I was to walk up to this building at night, my mind would play tricks. No matter how much I've said that I'm not 100% either way, it's definitely got an atmosphere just through looking at pictures. A lot of people who have stayed in this hotel obviously said that they, they, they were almost like myself. They, were, they walked up to the building, they didn't believe in ghosts, they stayed there and they spent a night alone there and, and before you know it they are 100% true believers. Now the, the Stanley Hotel itself has been there since 1895. It was taken over by James Louis Shanley in 1906 and basically tragedy struck ever, ever since James and his wife Beatrice took over. Now they had lots of famous people go and stay at the hotel while it was in its prominence. They had people like Thomas Edison, the Roosevelts themselves. Now the Roosevelts was uh, president at the time and they actually helped through prohibition and had a room dedicated to the Roosevelts in, in the hotel itself. So the prominence of this hotel was almost like no other it was it was an incredible incredible presence in ulster county but as i said like almost immediately tragedy struck now james and beatrice unfortunately and this this bit grasps me a little bit because they lost all three of their children before the age of one years old all in the hotel itself Kathleen, James Jr. and William all departed before reaching their first birthday. Um, to lose all three, it, it creates such a strong emotional bond to this hotel. For one, the mother and father, but two, could it could it connect? Could could something connect? Could it be a a physical and emotional bond to this building that that just would not let them leave? I, for one, have not got the evidence in front of me to prove that, but I also haven't got the evidence in front of me to disprove it. But in order to, to lose lose all the, all the children before the age of, of one is, is absolutely heart-wrenching. But they also lost um, Beatrice's sister, Esther Rowley Frauman, um, unfortunately succumbed to influenza um, while she was pregnant. She was carrying a child. And her presence is felt in a room... Um, on the top floor where she drew her final breath but it didn't just affect the Shanleys themselves um, the Shanleys turned this hotel into almost a superstructure they even had a house barber a, a guy by the name of Peter Greger now unfortunately Peter's daughter also lost her life while he was living in the house at the Shanley Hotel um, 1911 his daughter Rosie went over to the farmhouse across the road and tragically lost her life in a well. She fell into a well and lost her life. Now, unfortunately for the parents out there, that's a lot of children. Um, and I'm sorry if it affects you. I will be trying to be a little bit... I'd, well, I've got, I've got children myself. And like I said, it's pretty heart-wrenching when you think that's just four. That's just four children. There are supposedly more people and more children who have tragically lost their life in the Shanley Hotel. That would, uh, trust me, I would go back and haunt it if that was me myself. 
James himself, the James Senior, lost his life in 1937. Um, I, I was trying to find out if he was actually in the hotel or not in the hotel when he passed away, but the, the, the information out there is a little bit vague. But Beatrice herself grappled with the burdens of the hotel. In 1944, she relinquished ownership um, to a gentleman called Alan Hazen, marking the beginning of a series of subsequent proprietaries uh, until the hotel's abandonment in 1991. It did get picked back up in 2000, 2005. But a lot of the people and names connected to the building are supposedly, which we're going to go into next some of the things and some of the people that are still lingering in the building. Now that we've gone over some of the tragic history, let's start on the light-hearted side of what actually happens in the hauntings. So straight away I'm going to go to a website called Road Trippers. I will be posting a link to Road Trippers on the YouTube version of this. So if you are watching this on YouTube, it is down in the description below. Um, so I'm going to read back to you. In quotes, uh, it's written by a um, a writer by the name of... Let me scroll down to the bottom to give them full credit. Bear with. Uh, Alexandra Charlton, or Char Charlton? Uh, Chariton, sorry about the mispronunciation. I did, I did say that there would be some mispronunciation. So to quote, as I'm driving the right winding road to the Stanley Hotel, at uh, Shanley Hotel, not Stanley, see I did say, which sits in the foothills of the Shawangak Mountains in upstate New York, I pass several abandoned motels, two active correctional facilities and the Witches Hall State Forest. The view from Ulster County's US Route 209, also known as Clayton Pegleg Bates Memorial Highway, is beautiful all year round. But especially in the fall, it's late in October and the leaves have just begun to change. If I didn't ha already have reservations, I might have concerned, been concerned when I pulled up at the hotel at dusk. At first glance, the three-story white clapboard structure and most of Main Street in the tiny hamlet of Napanock looks abandoned. I'm checking in to allegedly to the allegedly haunted hotel in search of ghosts, and I don't have long to wait to find one a freshly painted sign on the porch that welcomes that reads welcome to the shanley hotel prominently featured a ghost his arms crossed but smiling now um i'm gonna skip through this but you you can read it with the link that's down the shanley hotel has more than embraced its spooky reputation now officially called the haunted shanley hotel they offer private investigations provide a list of most haunted rooms and share evidence in the form of video and evp recordings a stained glass window above the entrance declares the spirits are in in addition to the Continental Breakfast, my overnight stay included a five-hour staff-led paranormal investigation from 8pm till 1am, followed by free time to investigate at my leisure. They provide equipment, flashlights, K2s, EMF meters, uh, vibration balls, temperature sensors, frequency scanners, and encourage guests to bring their own. Uh, a quote from one of the workers there said, Nothing is faked or staged here. There is no need to fake anything. If the ghosts and spirits want to come out and speak, we're happy. We'll get just as excited as you, but we don't rig anything. So uh, one, of, one of the things that struck me about this, and, and this is where sort of we blur the lines a little bit between believer, non-believer. This is full belief into someone who is touring you. Now, do they have a bias? Do they have a moment that they 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 have that we want something to happen i always feel like when someone turns around to you and says we don't fake anything we don't do anything like that that it can be swayed ever so slightly so she goes on to say uh, the hotel is fully booked for the night and for the rest of october so we split into groups of three I've booked Maddie's room, located in the former Bordello area, on second floor, and I'm the only guest flying solo. My room is part of an active investigation area, meaning that the door must remain open till 1am. I don't think I'd feel quite comfortable um, 
with my door being open and lots of ghost hunters walking through, especially if you want a, a little bit of a uh, an early night or something. I, I, I don't suppose you'd be going there for a romantic weekend, would you, with your, with your spouse or partner? Uh, the rooms are cosy and eclectic, and in fact, the scariest thing at the Shanley Hotel might just be the overload of contrasting patterns. My room alone had three different wallpapers. Plaid and floral cover nearly every surface, and each room's floor is hand-painted with a different stencil design. Uh, tragedy strikes. Uh, let's see if we can just find some of the information. The hotel's spirits are known for producing some very clear EVPs, even if it's not always obvious during the nightly ghostly hunts. Searching for spirits can be hit or miss, and there is no money-back guarantee. They could be here talking to us right now, and we wouldn't know until we play back the recording, uh, someone said. We don't know why some nights we have a tremendous amount of activity, and some nights it's quiet. Over the five hours, our group had little success. Um has little success flashlights flicker and a few unintelligible words emerge through the white noise and i began to think it's all my fault apparently when it comes to ghost hunting skeptics are bad for business after a quiet stretch uh, vitali asked if there is a skeptic in our group i stay silent but later i ask her why the presence of a skeptic might negatively affect a haunt a hunt's outcome the spirits just won't bother she says but don't they want to prove they exist, I ask? It takes a lot of energy to contact us. They don't want to waste it. <laughs> uh, ghosts have nothing to prove. Um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Obviously, if you've got uh, the owner of the building or the person who is organising the groups telling you that sceptics, there must be a sceptic because that's why the proof's not happening. It kind of makes me lose a little bit of credence. Uh, they used several pieces of equipment and hoped to capture viable evidence, each using their own REM pod, which uses mini telescopic antenna uh, to, to radiate its own independent magnetic field around an object. We seem to have the most luck with a tablet running the Phasma Box app, which scans through several pre-recorded radio stations in search of voices. Uh, not everything you hear is paranormal, she urges us to listen for intelligent responses to specific questions. Now, I, I, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, because spirit boxes are something that I've I, I played with. I've played, I played with the apps, I've played with the um, spirit box apps. Now, unfortunately, I did read a, a little bit of a study into it where they did state that if it's connected to the internet, then don't bother. Don't bother. If it connects over Wi-Fi, don't bother. Because it, it doesn't really mean much. It doesn't really make much sense. Because all it is is piped through noise. Now, I have played with some of the ones that don't make use of Wi-Fi. Uh, and can easily be used on on uh, aeroplane mode or, or things like that. Now, I've never had a, a true tangible conversation with a spirit, but I did hear some things, and it was quite interesting. And the reaction... Now, are, are they predetermined? That, that, that's a question for someone who can get into the metadata of one of these apps, but they are quite interesting, and they are quite fun. They continued on with, although ghost hunting is usually done at night, the spirits are here in the daytime. It doesn't matter what time of day, but the dark lets you focus. Your senses are heightened in the dark and there's less contamination from the outside world. We're sitting in a circle and someone across from me gets full body chills twice, but other groups report even more activity, including hearing Sweet Thing. Now, this is... this is uh, the Sweet Thing is really kind of... I mean, in one of the videos I've just covered, I did something on a ghost chicken. Now, I, for one, never knew there were anything other than ghost humans. I've, I've never really heard much on the on the side of ghost dogs or ghost pets. But Sweet Thing was a cat who lived in the house. Um, so, Sweet Thing has been witnessed. And I'm sure at some point during the video I've, I've posted, there is... A, a, I'm doing air quotes again. I don't know why I keep on doing air quotes on, on podcasts, but I'm, I'm air quoting evidence uh, that is actually put on just by their, their, their website. Um, including here in Sweet Thing, who died of natural causes in Claire's room, it meows several times. Um, they asked questions about connections with the Mafia um, with no responses. 
at one point she thinks she hears uh, someone say hi Karen but there's no Karen in the group uh, shortly after uh, Hamling and her husband purchased the hotel he was cutting wood in a broad daylight when he well to, uh, yelled for his wife he wouldn't say why he called my name I thought he had cut himself Hamling says but three weeks and three drinks later he admitted that he had been spooked by the sight of a mysterious woman who had appeared next to him and he is a skeptic or was a skeptic should I say now this is one of them after reading that website it's it's obviously one of those that it's it, I, or I, I don't mean the disrespect that it's going to come across as, but it's almost Scooby-Doo, isn't it? It's almost the movie where someone turns around to you and says, would you take a £1,000 to stop in this hotel? I, I personally would. It sounds really fun. Uh, whether whether there'd be um, experiences or whether there would be any activity while I was there, um, like I've stated already in this in this podcast, I'm, I'm definitely in the 50-50 sort of area. So... If, if if they were nothing, would they blame it on me? <laughs> I don't know. But I think if someone offered me the money, or if I had the opportunity to, even, even without the offer of money, I would go and stay there. I suppose one of the questions I'm going to ask you guys is, would you would you stay there? Would, would it be something? Would you have to be paid? Um, or would you be able to manage it without it? So I suppose with going through websites, there's, there'd be no point going through anything unless we were going through the... One of the most, I wouldn't even call it responsible, um, review sites, but we're going to look at some of the reviews that have been left on TripAdvisor. So, obviously, the Shanley Hotel, you can stay there. This review is from date of stay, November 2019, and it's by a person by Nancy Q. Uh, so, they have rated it five stars, and it's a re real deal. My husband took me for an overnight stay. Um, Kim and Kelly, I, I don't understand who Kim and Kelly are, I'm sorry, uh, were knowledgeable and friendly. They were, there was so much paranormal activity through the evening into early morning. We stayed in the Roosevelt room and the orbs were flying around all night. When Hubs went to the restroom, someone sat on the bed. Someone or something I could not see. Uh, what an amazing stay. The bed was super comfy and our room was clean. I cannot wait to come back. Thanks, Shanley. Um, <laughs> I, is it a romantic stay? Is it somewhere that you'd take your wife? I, I understand if you were in the area of ghost hunting, you'd, you'd go. A user by the name of Joanne H. Uh, wrote in 2013, another five-star review, very friendly staff and spirits uh, at the Shanley Hotel. This is not hype. I would rank it in the top three of all the places we have stayed and at and investigated. So a seasoned investigator. We experienced everything from heavy scent of perfume in Marguerite's room and throughout the hotel at different times and places to the smell of cigar, cigar smoke in Joe's room on the third floor. My daughter had her hair stroked uh, in the basement and I had Sweet Thing the cat rub on my leg and move my pant leg. We got a number of EVPs from the ladies in the Bordello room uh, and a third floor, uh, an, an experience on the third floor and a somber Rosie. We were stunned when we asked George in the basement if he wanted us to leave and we got stay twice on the spirit box. Yes, we will definitely return. This is one of those uh, moments. I'm, I'm actually going to read it. It's a one star uh, and we can use this in uh, an evidence for, I suppose. Uh, Philip M wrote in 2016, could have been a great overnight stay for my friends and I. The hotel is creepy and clearly full of history. The sad part is that it's horribly run. We were greeted at the door. We had to wait to be assigned rooms. They investig uh, the investigation started late. The staff was unprofessional. All oh, right, that's, that's a bit of the, the stay there. You can't drink or eat in your rooms, but the staff chain smokes cigarettes a room away from ours. Now, obviously, one of the things that people are seeing in the phenomena is the smell of cigarettes. So, is this people constantly smoking, or is this the smell of cigarettes? Uh, the staff seem to disappear, leaving the 16 guests confused and just sitting and waiting. To make a, light, a long, sad story short, our night came to a screeching halt when there was a life-threatening emergency with two members of staff which involved the police, ambulances, etc. Well, that's a that's an evening to, to expect, isn't it? Further screaming, fighting and cursing involved the owner had us running out of the door at 2.30am. We felt very unsafe and not because of the ghosts. We were disappointed because there was clearly 
paranormal activity there. It could have been a great store, a great stay if the owners and staff got their stuff together. I am. Um, oh wow, that that's. Uh, there's multiple. Stay away if you don't like cigarette smoke and smell. So obviously this is one of them that there's there's plenty of people that have that have stated that they've smelt cigarette smoke. Now is this because the owners and staff are smoking in the building, or is it because of the the residual haunted energy? I suppose whether you believe in the Shanley stories or not, or people who've stayed there or not, that it is a place that's absolutely steeped in history. It's also steeped in a lot of stories and a lot of horror, whether that be personal torment or what people have thought or think that they've seen. Whether it be the noises or the sounds or anything else that's gone on as, as time has gone by, I suppose it always boils down to your beliefs and what you actually think. Because... I, for one, I would like to stay there and be put in that position where I could hear something, I could see something, I could smell something. But I suppose until the day comes that I do travel over to New York and go and stop in the Shaney Hotel, I guess it's just going to be one of them that's just spoke about. I don't know if you guys have heard about the Shaney Hotel. If you have, please let me know somewhere in comment form. Um, and also, what do you think? What do you, What do you think? Do you think people have got skeptical beliefs about this place and think it's just run as a big advertisement or do you think that there may be something underlying please let me know but for now i'm gonna call it quits on the end of this podcast if you've enjoyed it do all the usual stuff and i shall see you obviously on the next one thanks for tuning into another episode of it's all a little weird i hope you've enjoyed exploring the strange and unusual with me today remember the world is full of mysteries just waiting to be uncovered So keep your eyes open and your mind curious. If you've got a spooky encounter, a UFO sighting, or a cryptid tale of your own, I'd love to hear it. So drop me a line on the email attached or hit me up on social media. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It helps other curious minds find their way to us. Until next time, stay weird, stay wonderful, and keep questioning everything. This is Adam, signing off.